Hello, festival guards of the internet. I'm the Festival Finesser, and in today's video, we're going to be talking all about Forbidden Kingdom set times and conflicts. And because we're doing that, that must mean I am going to Forbidden Kingdom 2021. Because why else would I be talking about set times and conflicts on the channel? So in this video, we're going to be looking at all the artists, where they're playing, what time. We're going to be seeing if any artists I want to see are playing at the same time and kind of figure out which one we're going to see. And then we are also going to be talking about the Finesse Gang meetup at Forbidden Kingdom, where it's at, when it's happening, how to find me, what day, all that good stuff don't go anywhere because it's coming up after the intro so here we go can i get a year? i'm the festival finesse florida finesse gang can i get a year What's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another video. For those of you guys who are new here and don't know me, what's good? I'm the Festival Finesse. This is my channel, a channel that revolves around music festivals and live music going experiences where they focus a concentration on dubstep and rhythm. If you are not following me on a festival day by day, you're probably following me at a show in New York, New Jersey, Philly, Delaware, Virginia, Maryland. Basically, anywhere I go, you guys are coming with me. And if you're not following me on a festival or show, probably sitting with me here at this desk, getting life hacks, trick tips, festival reviews, lineup reviews, EDM news, controversial debates and any other words of advice I can give to you guys to make sure you can have the best festival going experience possible. Now, today we are talking about the festival I'm probably most excited for this festival season and that's like on top of Lost Lands right now guys, mainly because we don't have a lineup yet, but this festival has just caught my eye. It's always been a predominantly dubstep festival and the lineup this year is just so crazy. And when I first saw the lineup, I was expecting conflict after conflict. I was like, there's too many names on here for there not to be conflicts. But they actually did a very good job of kind of separating it and spacing it out. So you could catch a little bit of everybody if you wanted to break it up. So we're going to dive into these set times right now. But before I do that, I do have to mention that this video is being sponsored by KB23 Pins, a relatively new pin company in the festival and base scene. They have a group on Facebook called Rhythm Kids Pins, where you guys can go and find information about upcoming releases, dip trains, and connect with pin connoisseurs alike. They just actually released a bunch of new pins that I'm going to show to you guys right now real quick. They have some Cyclops Army themed ones. They have one called Robo Rather inspired by Excision and Lost Lands. And they also have some Zed's Dead and Rugrat themed ones with Tommy Pickles throwing up the Z and then the Rugrats logo but instead of said Zed's Dead. They have these in a variety of colors and that some of them even glow in the dark which is fucking sick. So big up KB23 pins for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about these fucking set times for Forbidden Kingdom because there is a lot to talk about and there are a lot of heavy hitters on here. So first off, we are going to be looking at Friday, and I really kind of don't like how the, the set times go vertically. It's way more easier to read horizontally, so I actually went to Photoshop real quick and did that myself. And so I have a little key, I guess, kind of thing. So all the green ones are artists that I want to see pretty much the whole set of. Artists in yellow are artists I would have to kind of split half and half. And then artists in red are artists that I would kind of want to see both of them but are conflicting. And uh, yeah, so just so you have the information, let's look at these set times. So at one o'clock, we have Mother Lotus on the New Kingdom stage. On the Forbidden stage at one o'clock, we have Jinx. And at one o'clock on the Village stage, we have SPVD. And I definitely am not going to be there that early. I'm pretty much showing up to the festival for my first set I want to see. But just to kind of go in order here, we have 2 p.m. Stellar, 2 p.m. Crizzly. And then we have also 145 going back to back bonkers. And of those three, I would probably see Crizzly, just that's the one I know the most of. It's kind of most associated with bass and dubstep. A lot of people here actually are associated with bass and dubstep, but Crizzly is like the most OG to me. He's the one I know the most, and he's kind of been around the longest. So I don't know Stellar, and I don't know goon back to back bonkers so getting into this three o'clock hour 245 we have og nixon playing on the new kingdom stage till 3 30 we also have cod doves playing at 245 to 3 30 as well on the forbidden stage and then at 3 15 we have og who i've actually seen in new york and uh, he's just, he's definitely more of a smaller artist in comparison to the two. And if I had to pick between OG Nixon and Cod Dubs, I would definitely pick Cod Dubs just because that's the New York homie. And, uh, you know, I just, I feel like he's more heavy and he just does more on the decks. Like OG Nixon is more known for his production and his sound. Cod Dubs is definitely more known for his chopping and his double drops, triple drops, and just his high energy set. So I would definitely check out Cod Dubs and you guys will definitely find me at the Cod Dubs set for the whole entire set. And then after Cod Dubs... On the Forbidden stage, we have Dirty Audio playing 3.30 to the 4.30. Also playing 3.30 to the 4.30 on the, on the New Kingdom stage, we have Brondo. 
And then playing 3.15 to 4 o'clock, we have Fury and MC Dino. So that one is really no relevance to me. I don't know who that is. But if we had to go with Brondo or Dirty Audio, I would go with Brondo just because I feel like he is more of a dubstep act. I have seen him before. I also feel like I have seen Dirty Audio before, and I feel like he's a little bit more trappy. I feel like Brondo is definitely going to bring me that heavy dubstep and kind of energy that I like. And then... At the kind of 4 o'clock hour, we have 4.15 to 5, AT Aliens. And then we have 4.30 to 5.30, Jessica Autofred. And then we have 4 o'clock to 4.45, Crimes on the Village stage. So this is where it starts getting weird because it was nice and easy. It was like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. And then they started doing these 45-minute sets. And there's a couple of back-to-backs, which make it an hour and a half and a full hour. So it definitely gets a little confusing. And there's definitely some overlaps, which makes it a little hard. It's a lot of running around. And I do advise to, you know, not have, like, have a schedule, but don't follow your schedule to a T because you're going to find yourself, like, almost stressing that way. You're going to be running back and forth, and you're always going to be kind of doing more running back and forth than enjoying the festival. A lot of the time, if you find the set you're at, and you're enjoying it, and you're feeling it, and you're vibing, just stay there. Even if you want to see someone else, because you could leave someone else, and it could not be as good. And, you know, just keep that vibe going. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be... It's, yeah, I just, that's... Whatever. We're going to keep moving here. So, um, yeah, I would see AT Aliens preferably over Jessica Autofred. Jessica Autofred is a little bit heavy, but I do like AT Aliens because I have a little bit of everything. They're both definitely heavy based artists, but I kind of like how AT Aliens gives you a little bit of everything. And I feel like they kind of tend to play like kind of more older classic tunes for some reason, I feel like. And uh, yeah, I've seen them a couple times and I really don't know how to rock a crowd. Jessica Autofred does too, but I don't know why. I'm just leaning more towards AT Aliens, but that's one of those conflicts for me. Like if all my homies wanted to see Jessica Autofred, I wouldn't be like, no, nah, I'm going to AT Aliens. I have to see them. Like I could see either one. As long as I get some bass and some heaviness, I'm straight. So, um, after AT Aliens or Jessica Autofred, there's a little conflict there because that's 4.15 to 5. And then Jessica Autofred is 4.30 to 5.30. And then, so in that 5.30 time slot, I definitely want to see Monks. I've been a huge fan of Monks. And I've seen Monks a couple of times before he stopped showing up. And now, you know, it's a new year. It's a new festival season. I feel like Monks is going to earn his title back and show up. And he's going to show you guys what he can do. Because Monks has been around making Rhythm before Rhythm was even popular. Like, that's how long I've been fucking with Rhythm. is because, because solely because of Monks. Monks... Those like, my, like he's what I think of when I think of Rhythm, you know, back in the day. Now it's a little bit different. He changed his sound a little bit, but Monks used to make some OG fucking core Rhythm back in the day. So that's why I want to see Monks. But there's an overlap there because 5.30 to 6.30, we have Monks. And then at 6 to 7, we have this Midnight T back-to-back downlink. And I would skip this mode step and back-to-back 30 Phonics. That's going to be a little different kind of dubstep probably some drum and bass some weird stuff just a different kind of dubstep that i'm not really into all that much honestly i definitely need that midnight tea and um downlink set but that is going on the same time as monk so i pretty much have to leave monks at like six o'clock and then pull up to midnight tea maybe like 6 15 but again like i don't i, wa I want to see like the beginning of that set i feel like the energy is going to be crazy so i want to be there as early as possible for that but i do want to catch a good chunk of monks and then so during that midnight tea set hero bust is also throwing down i could leave midnight tea and go to hero bust for the end um, but also right after Midnight Teen Downlink set is that Liquid Stranger Sunset set. And I kind of want to see that because that's when the lights are about to start going down. The visuals are going to be insane. And I feel like, you know, with a special kind of set like that, Liquid is just going to go kind of crazy and just heavier than usual, especially on this kind of lineup. It's a really heavy fest. It's not so much of a Wook fest or a Wakan style vibe. It's definitely more heavy hitting artists. So I feel like Liquid is going to fucking throw it down. But yeah, they, like that's the other thing is like during that same time is Hero Bust and Hero Bus is definitely going to be more dubstep. Liquid Liquid Stranger is going to be like kind of like really hard whoop bass, like just really just heavy hitting. Like Liquid Stranger vibes. Y'all know what I'm talking about if you've seen him. But Hero Bus is going to give you that classic generic, not generic, but that classic heavy hitting dubstep that we all kind of know and like. You know what I mean? So that's where it kind of like is a draw for me. It's because like, do I want to see a crazy Liquid set with crazy visuals and kind of a different experience with that sunset set or do i want to see just a hero bus set and get that heaviness that i kind of know i'm expecting so i haven't seen either of them in a long time so either one i would be happy with and at that point i'm really just going to see where my ear takes I me mean, just kind of wander how i've been if i'm at the one stage for too long i'm going to switch it up maybe but i definitely want to see any of those guys i don't really care which one honestly because i don't love them all that much hero bust or liquid but i do like them enough to want to see them they are both heavy and again that's just going to be where my ear takes me so and so on the other stage here, just to, just to make mention, we have YDG, 
and uh, that's gonna be more kind of like dark trap I kind of feel like he has a cool vibe and I really fuck with it but not enough to miss it for monks or hero bust or liquid or midnight tea and downlink and then also on here we have just say yes who is a really fucking dope house duo I'm pretty sure or a base house duo I should say I've been fucking with them for a long time and they make some really good base house so we're back over here to the more main stage it looks like this is kind of like almost like a side stage and like a different kind of base you know the, the forbidden stage and your new kingdom stage are really like your core dubstep acts so after this liquid stranger and hero bust conflict you know whatever wherever i end up going i'm probably gonna end at hero bus because i don't really have an option and then um at eight o'clock we have well 7 30 then we have dion timmy back to back company i'm definitely not gonna miss that that's gonna be a fat back to back and a different back to back i know they went on tour together so they probably have a little bit of chemistry and connection so i feel like they're gonna throw it the fuck down and it's gonna be heavier than usual because dion tends to like vary a little bit and play like some melodic and some like bouncy house kind of stuff so i feel like it's just going to be a lot more heavier we're not going to get as much of that because company is going to fill in those gaps um and then 8 30 that said ends and then we have we're probably going to blunts and blondes for the end um i personally think blunts and blondes is like a little too high like how is midnight tea and downlink before blunts and blondes I, I don't know that's just i feel like they've both been around for way longer and deserve a better spot but that's just my opinion. Blunts and Blondes has been buzzing though recently. So that's 8 to 9 Blunts and Blondes with Dion Timmer and company right before that 7.30 to 8.30. And again, like that half hour makes it really annoying. Like I just wished it was 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock and I could just kind of pick and choose. But now it's like, okay, this one's done. What's actually still playing now? Because there's, yeah, it's just, it's a little confusing for me, honestly. That's why I like reading them left to right, not vertically. So after Blunts and Blondes, we have BTSM 9.05 to 10.05. And then also at 8.30, we have this Dr. P back-to-back -back fun case for an hour and a half. That is just going to be a crazy back-to-back. -back. And honestly, I don't think I need to stay for all that back-to-back. -back. I definitely want to catch the beginning for the energy. But as it gets longer, I feel like it's going to get a little bit weirder and playing a different kind of dubstep. Um, because it, and it's not just fun case fun you know it tends to be a little bit different because fun case is just crazy heavy dubstep all the time but when it goes back to back i notice it's a little bit kind of a different vibe and then i'm not too interested in this narrow set honestly so i'm obviously going to see excision i probably wouldn't see anybody over excision anyway yeah on the other stage here we have arius playing at seven to eight who they're a really dope duo i don't even know what kind of genre they play it's kind of all over the place but they are, are kind of popular on like youtube and shit honestly and just like on social media then we also have figure back to back proto hype for some reason, I don't know why it doesn't really interest me as much in comparison to all the other back-to-backs happening, like Dion Timmer and company and Dr. P and Fun Case. And then headlining here, the last night, we have Lil Texas, who is just that like obnoxious hardstyle kind of vibe. So if we were going to run through Friday real quick, I would probably do Cod Dubs 245 to 330, Rondo 330 to 415, AT Aliens 415 to 5. Have a little break, like 5 to 5.30. And then I would do Monks at 5.30 to 6. And then I would do Midnight Tea back-to-back downlink from 6 to 7. And then I would probably pick between Liquid Stranger or Hero Bus. That's just going to be like an in-the-moment kind of decision. Dion Timmer, back-to-back -back company, 7.30 to 8.30. And then I'll probably start... I don't know. I'd probably just start Dr. Peter Fun Case. But I also could go to see um, Blunts and Blondes. And then see the end of... Dr. P and Fun Case because it's that hour and a half. And then after Dr. P and Fun Case, make my way to Excision. I'm really not going to be at the Village stage at all on day one. Definitely bouncing back and forth between the Forbidden stage and the New Kingdom stage. So now I know who I'm going to see. Now you have an idea of what kind of conflicts I am struggling with and what I'm going to see. And again, I don't really have these conflicts made like in stone. I like to kind of see how I'm feeling in the moment, what the vibe is, how the stage is, where my music takes me, where the where my friends want to go. I just kind of go with the flow in a certain aspect. So now we're going to look at Saturday here. I feel like day two is definitely not as conflicting for me, I feel like. And I do like that I have some action on the village stage. And day two is when the meetup is going to happen. So stay tuned. Keep it locked. <laughs> Hello Finesse Gang, I am out here in the editing lab, editing for this video, which also happens to be the recording studio. I literally do everything from this desk. But anyway, the reason I'm making this video is because while I was editing, I realized that day two never properly recorded. I sat down and did days one and two in one sitting, but the camera died in the middle of it and didn't catch most of day two. So I was lucky enough to salvage part one, and I figured, why am I going to redo 
the whole thing when I already have part one done. So I'm going to separate it into two parts, day one and day two. This is day one, as you can see, obviously. And this is where you guys are going to be able to find me with set times and conflicts I'm dealing with. And then in part two, day two, we are going to be talking about the day two conflicts where I'm going to be at, plus the finesse gang meetup, which is definitely happening. We have a date, time, and location confirmed. So that information is all going to be given in the next video. So keep it locked. Make sure you guys are subscribed if you're not already. And I'll see you in part two or at Forbidden Kingdom in Orlando next week. Peace out, guys. Love y'all.